This is International Master Eric Kislik, and the following video will be about the toughest chess move I've ever seen, and probably the hardest that you'll ever see yourself. So I actually asked a number of players in the top 10 in the world, three to be exact, what was the hardest position they've seen before. And I've show, I showed them this position and the move, and none of them actually disagreed with me. I thought someone was gonna say, oh, well, I can suggest something easier or simpler if we're talking about typical looking middle game positions, completely looking normal middle game positions, this is about as tough as they come and I was really amazed to see it. It's one of those things where it makes sense after you see it but we just have a natural bias to block it out. So the starting position comes after knight to d7 attacking the knight on c5, knight takes b7, queen to b8. This is the starting position. So the problem is the bishop on b2 is undefended. So it looks like if we go knight to a5 or knight to c5, it looks like we're going to be losing material. And that's why players suggested moves like bishop h3 when I showed this to them. But one international master had a very interesting idea. He suggested the move knight to a5. And his idea was after knight takes a5, there's the move queen to a4, which seems to make sense, right? He's targeting this and this. But the problem is there's the very nice move c6, and now there's a really nice trap. If queen takes, there's the move bishop to b3, and take a look at the queen position here. The queen is actually trapped after the move bishop to d8. So the only move is knight to d2, bishop d8, knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes, and black goes queen d6. Actually, it turns out that white has surprisingly good compensation because he's getting two pawns, and he, and he already has the bishop pair for the queen. So it turns out he actually gets fairly good compensation and it's not gonna be easy for black to try to convert this. So that was actually a really interesting idea suggested by this international master who I showed this to. So there is actually a stronger move and I classify this as a painfully slow move after the move knight c5 because it looks like we go knight c5, black simply takes it and don't we just lose that bishop on b2? And if we play a slow move in between, can't black just play the move knight to b3? Well, that's what I'll be addressing here. So let's say we, we play the move knight c5. And it's an amazing move because it just looks like we're just dropping a piece. It really looks like we're simply dropping a piece. But after the move knight takes c5, so let's take a look at the move bishop takes c5. Here we can play the beautiful move knight takes e5. And this highlights the fact that both of these are undefended. And this is also undefended if there are some exchanges. So for instance, after bishop takes, we play knight takes, queen c8, king takes g2, queen takes, pawn takes, and now we end up in a position where we're up material. So that's the problem for black in this variation. So we've, ca we've got to capture the b7 pawn and the e5 pawn in that line. So that works out beautifully for white, but the real key is what happens after the move knight takes c5. Because here white only has one pawn for the piece, and it looks very difficult to get the material back because black has ideas like, let's say, putting a knight on b3 or putting a bishop on b3. So it seems to be very difficult to actually get the material back here, but there's a very, very slow move, which is really, really beautiful, making the whole concept here really, really amazing. So let's take a look at this. It's hard to actually give you a hint without giving it away, so you may want to pause this before I make the move on the board. But the basic idea is that black's pieces end up so tied up in the main variation that white is able to win material by force. He's able to win back his material with a large advantage. So the move here is queen to c2. And I consider this one of the greatest very slow moves I have ever seen before. And the reason I call it a slow move is because it's one of those moves where you'd expect a hard-hitting tactic right away. You'd expect knight takes e5, or you'd expect b takes c5. You'd expect something a little bit more hard-hitting on the surface. But what we're doing here is we're defending the b2 bishop, and we're targeting the vulnerable knights on the c-file for black. And I'm also preparing to target the d5 bishop. So one of the tricks here is if knight to b3, I have a very nice trick here, the move knight to d2. And this is quite beautiful because here this, this falls with check. And if he takes on, on g2, I can take on b3 with check, attacking the king. So 
all of these work out beautifully for white and he's able to win material. So that works out perfectly and that's the justification for that line. So after bishop to b3, here I simply go queen c1. And now I'm actually gonna win the material back because if the knight moves, then the c6 knight is hanging after that. So the best move that he can play here is the move queen to d8, I take back. Okay, rook to b8 makes a lot of sense to try to get some counterplay down the b-file. He's also improving his worst place piece. And let's say I just go bishop to c3, queen d7, rook b1. I just wanted to illustrate some possible moves here. Let's say queen to e3. And here white has quite a nice positional advantage. And um, yeah, it all works out pretty well. White's, white ends up with an extra pawn. So it uh, <laughs> turns out to be a perfect refutation of black's knight to d7 move. I think we should play through this again just to show it one more time so you can see why it's such an amazing concept that's played here. So it looks like we can't take that b7 pawn. We take it, queen to b8. We play the fantastic move knight to c5, which is justified by knight takes c5 and the beautiful queen to c2 double x clam quite an unbelievable move. And one of the points here is that if the knight moves, we can play the move e4. If the knight goes back to, let's say, d7, we can play the move e4. And that's going to work out nicely in our favor. Let's say, for, for instance, knight to d7. And here we can just go e4. And now, the problem is the bishop is defending the c6 knight. So if the bishop moves, we simply capture it with a very large advantage. So this is a really, really nice example of a slow move that just naturally we'd have a tendency to cut it out of our calculations. We would just assume, no, we can't play that. I can't play queen c2. I need to get my material back. But as we can see here, we actually have time for it. And part of what's so counterintuitive about it is that both of these pieces can move to the b3 square. So even if you started thinking about the move queen c2, you might go, well, I'm a little afraid of knight to b3 or bishop to b3. But as we saw in this line, after knight to b3, we have the beautiful retreat knight to d2 which works because of problems with black's king. And after the move bishop to b3, we have the beautiful move queen c1. So as somebody who studies chess multiple hours per day and has seen uh, hundreds of thousands of chess positions, if not more, I can certainly say that this was the most difficult position I've seen before. I cannot recall seeing a, a more amazing move than queen to c2. So this is definitely up there in the annals of chess history. And uh, I hope you <laughs> really enjoyed this move and can appreciate the logic that went into finding the move. So it's very important in some positions like this to not cut off your calculation too soon. Granted, this is a very, very, very difficult version of this concept, but there will be easier cases in your own games where you might be able to take a pawn and then play a slow move where you're temporarily down a piece but you're going to be able to win the piece back by force after that. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.